What's up, Star Wars fans? My name is Prince, and I'm an urban acolyte. Now that Palpatine has been confirmed as returning for the final film in the Skywalker saga, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, some fans are asking the question about if the audience will finally learn what the connection is between the Emperor and the Supreme Leader who was leading the First Order, well, up until Kylo Ren decided to show us that Snoke isn't half the ruler that Palpatine was when he killed him in The Last Jedi. So there's an article posted over on comicbook.com by Nicole Drum exploring this question by episode nine, finally revealing the connection between Snoke and Palpatine. Now, I want you guys to hang out and watch all of this video because I'm going to respond to Nicole's article and tell you why everything she said is wrong in her article. I mean, like, seriously, dog. Comicbook.com's office is like 20 minutes from my house. Hey, y'all could have just asked me to drop by and help y'all out. But hey, before I get into this connection between Snoke and Palpatine, I just want to say that if you're new here and you like getting deeper into the themes in Star Wars, hey, be sure to subscribe and uh, ring that bell to enable notifications so you know when I'm posting new videos. This is geek culture with a purpose. So this isn't your typical Star Wars channel. There's no bait for click type videos here. Just that pure uncut rawness. Also, a quick shout out to my main man, Mike Rendell, who was part of the Urban Acolyte Academy founders. Mike just completed the Darth Maul Challenge, which is a 30-day workout challenge that I created based on the Darth Maul workout that I talked about in that Real Life Jedi Darth Maul video. In one month, Mike lost 15 pounds and he improved his push-up test by five. Since Mike is one of the founders of the Urban Acolyte Academy, hey, he's going to have a spot in the Get Lean Academy along with the rest of the founders. So great work, Mike. I'm expecting this dude to be strong, lean, and ripped this time next year. Hey, man, it's about to be the rise of the Acolytes in 2020. Also, shout out to the rest of the founders in the Urban Acolyte Academy. Heather Spears, Richard Demaria, David Kirksey, and Anthony Clark. These guys are going to get a month of personal training from me uh, in the Get Lean Academy for every month that they are in the Urban Acolyte Academy as founders. Hey, you can join them now. It's just $10 a month for the rest of this week. Hey, and then the prices are going to jump up. All the founders who joined before the 5th of May will be part of the Get Lean program, which is one of my personal training packages that starts at $100 a month all by itself. But okay, let's talk about the Snoke Palpatine connection from Nicole's article. Now, when we saw Darth Vader chuck the Emperor into the reactor of the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi, it seemed that things were pretty final for him. I mean, sure, we didn't see a body, but he was thrown into the reactor. It looked like there was an explosion, and then the Death Star was destroyed, sending shrapnel and debris everywhere. And sure, there were stories and legends about how Palpatine managed to preserve his consciousness and resurrect himself with the use of clone bodies. But hey, that's trash for legends. George Lucas said that Sith don't become forced ghosts. Their focus is on physical immortality, and once they die, Yo, that's a wrap for them. So if that if that's the rules that are set by the creator, then what's the deal? Well, we have to wait and see about that one. But a bigger question, hey, what's the connection between Palpatine and Snoke? Well, both of them already share a connection. Palpatine was killed by his apprentice, Darth Vader, when Vader turned back to the light and killed his master in order to save his son. Snoke was also killed by a member of the Skywalker family his own apprentice, Ben Solo. But when Ben did it, it wasn't to save Rey, it was to serve his own personal ambitions. Now, according to Nicole, Palpatine and Snoke were both cut down by the person they were grooming because they share more in common than the dark side tradition of a student killing their master. As it turns out, some fans have been speculating that there is a deeper significance in how Snoke and Palpatine both went out because dig this, Snoke was actually Palpatine the entire time. So this theory is based on the idea of Palpatine's clones resurrection from legends. In legends, Palpatine couldn't reliably transfer himself into clone bodies. After a year, he required a new clone body to host his essence. But in this theory, Palpatine doesn't use an unstable clone body. He transferred his essence directly into Snoke. Nicole says that this idea explains why Snoke rose to power so quickly, as well as why Snoke's body is twisted and ravaged. 
If the idea that Palpatine was using Snoke as a host to extend his lifespan, then it also presents the possibility that Palpatine was grooming Ben Solo as an apprentice to be his next host. Snoke's death in The Last Jedi complicates this theory, but it could also be why Palpatine has to emerge directly as the greatest evil that J.J. Abrams mentioned during the episode nine panel. So that's Nicole's theory. What do y'all think? If you like it, I got some bad news for you, dog. So I have no comments on the essence transfer thing. That's something from Legends. Essence transfer may have been alluded to in one of the recent canon novels. I think in the first Aftermath novel by Yup Tashu, but I don't think he said, yeah, directly, yo, Essence Transfer is something people can do who master the dark side. I think it was just something like the dark side allows people unnatural abilities, which isn't far off from what Palpatine said to Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. Here's the thing, Palpatine and Snoke were aware of each other, or at least Snoke was aware of Palpatine. I mentioned in a video about the Knights of Ren, how the Grisk are a warrior species from the unknown regions who were monitoring the Republic and the Empire for decades. I don't know how far back the Grisk had been keeping tabs on the Republic, but I'm gonna say it started before the events in the prequels. The Grisk were likely involved in Palpatine's initial plans to lead the Separatist Alliance as his alter ego, Darth Sidious. The initial plans to carry out Order 66 were going to involve clone troopers wearing armor alloy containing lightsaber resistance, Cortosis Weave. In Legends, Cortosis was just lightsaber resistant, but in canon, Cortosis is more than just lightsaber resistance. It, it will absorb and redirect the energy from the blade, it's like a capacitor, and it'll actually shut off a lightsaber. The Grisk were the ones who brought Cortosis to Darth Sidious. The Grisk were not the only ones spying on Republic space, because the Chiss were too. We don't know what species Snoke is, or anything related to his origins, but Snoke also admits to keeping tabs on what Palpatine was doing. Snoke was aware of what and who Palpatine was. Honestly, Snoke seems to have been a fan of Palpatine because from the moment he became Supreme Leader, he seemed as if he did nothing but attempt to present himself as a better version of Palpatine, or at least that he had some ties to Palpatine. And this is something you can see in real world history if you're a student of history. If you look at the Germanic kings under the Holy Roman Empire, they would do these things that would tie them back to the Caesar of Rome. It was like, hey, do you remember how great Rome was under the Caesar? Well, look at me. Under me, we can recapture some of that clout. We can also share in some of that greatness. I'm the new Caesar, and we're going to be the next great civilization. That's basically what Snoke was. A big Palpatine pretender. Now, how Snoke rose to power so quickly, quickly within the First Order, we don't exactly know that. But again, the most recent Thrawn novel, Thrawn Alliances, that book might shed some light. That novel in Snoke's own words in the novel to The Last Jedi, Snoke killed a lot of people to become the Supreme Leader. How he found the First Order was really simple. He saved the First Order fleet. They were lost wandering through the unknown regions of space. The Thrawn novel revealed that only someone who was force sensitive could navigate a ship through the unknown regions. The hyperspace lanes were unstable and a Nava computer was basically useless. Someone required foresight or the ability to know and see things just before they happen um, in order to physically navigate a ship through those hyperspace lanes in the unknown regions. Now the Chiss word for people with foresight or third sight as they called it is a Chiss word that translates to Skywalker in basic. Look, Snoke is force sensitive and he's from the own unknown regions. He had the foresight and the knowledge required to save the First Order fleet. So I know this is going to disappoint some people, but Snoke is just Snoke. He's no one special. He's not Darth Plagueis. He's not Palpatine. He's a dude who happened to be in the right place at the right time. He managed to manipulate the events leading to Luke taking Ben on as an apprentice, and eventually Ben's attempt to destroy the new Jedi Order. I feel like the story about what Snoke actually did will be far more interesting than these weak theories that people want to create about Snoke because that stuff never stands up under scrutiny. Like this theory. So sorry guys, I'm not buying that Palpatine is Snoke. It doesn't make sense. 
How is Snoke keeping tabs on Palpatine if Snoke is already Palpatine? Also, and yo, this is the big nail in the coffin. Why wouldn't Snoke go straight to Coruscant and perform the ritual in the Sith Shrine there so he can unlock the full power of the dark side? I mean, what, did you not know about that one? Because if you didn't, then every Darth Plagueis theory you have is wrong. Every theory you have about Snoke and Palpatine is wrong. If you don't know about that dark side ritual, look, go read that Tarkin novel and throw out basically every bad theory about the bad guys in the sequel saga if they mention any of these dead Sith Lords. But anyway, yo, those are my thoughts. This theory, well, if I didn't know anything about what Snoke tells the audience in the last Jedi novel, hey, I might consider it, but knowing what I know, no, I can't do it, son. I can't do it. I posted this article on the Urban Acolyte Facebook page, and I think I said I debunked the theory before I even finished reading it. It's a nice try, but no, nah, I'm a pass, homie. But what about you? Before I told you exactly why it's wrong, did you buy it? I mean, heck, maybe you still think it's going to happen, or at least possible. I mean, I can't even consider this, though. Like, if this movie, if this made it into the movie then I should be right in Star Wars because I'm positive that I can create a better reason for Palpatine's return while I'm dropping a deuce than what's in this theory. Like, I swear to you I can, which makes me think I should make a video talking about five ways that Palpatine could return in episode nine. I should say something like, hey, if you share this video so that it gets at least 10,000 views or more, then I'll do that video. Actually, yeah. Yeah, y'all help this video get at least 10,000 views, and I'll make that video. Five ways that Palpatine could return in episode nine that actually makes sense. I mean, I used to get 10,000 views easily, and it was all because of you guys. So if, if I can't hit that number now, then I'll be honest, people just aren't interested in what I have to say about Star Wars, and I'm okay with that. Yo, I can, I can easily shut this channel down and go do something else, like talking about Lonzo Ball, which... Uh, I, I, I'll just be real. I'd kind of rather do that and talk about Star Wars right now anyway. But hey, if you like this video, hey, hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you have something to sh uh, share with the Urban Acolyte community, post it down below in the comments and I'll be checking back to see what you have to say. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and uh, click that subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an Urban Acolyte. Embark on the journey to become the hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. If you like this video and you want to see more, hey, be sure to check out these videos on the top theories for Star Wars Episode 9. You can also check out this other video that YouTube has picked just for you. But that's all I got for this video, so thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing, and may the force of others be with you. Always.